Hello and welcome back to another 3D Ross tutorial. In this quick tutorial I'm going to show you how you can utilise stencils in Substance Painter. So in this tutorial I am going to use my stencils as shown here and you can find them in the link in the description to my Gumroad. Uh, you don't have to use these but it's available for purchase in the description if you would like. Also enter your email and you'll get updates if I upload any more in the future. Okay so first to set up with I've got this basic cube just to demonstrate but here you'd have whatever asset you want to work on. So I'm just going to import all of my stencils. So I'm going to, with them all dragged in, I'm just going to press 1 Control A to select them all. And under undefined I'm just going to select texture and I'm going to import it just for this project. Right, with them imported, I'm just going to set up a basic material that we're going to add on to. So I'm just going to use concrete. This one should do. Okay. So now we've got a base material. We can go to our stencils, which would be in project. You can also set up custom folders, and I'll do that in another video. But with our stencils here, we can utilize any of these stencils. So for example, if we wanted, say, these splashes here. I'm just going to create a new fill layer and this will be our splash layer and I want the splashes to go over the concrete bumps so it wouldn't flow to the height as much so I'm just going to put the height on normal I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit that way we get some height information from the concrete but not all just make it a bit shiny um, and then I'm just going to right click our fill layer and black mask okay from there we want to go to the projection tool, which is this one right here. And now we get a black box, and this is where our projection stencil texture goes. So at the bottom of our properties, we have a grayscale option. And this is where we import our stencils. So let's say we want a paint splatter, we want this one. We just drag that in, and now we get this box here and you can paint in the 2D view or the 3D view. I'm just going to paint in the 3D view for now. So you can just go like this, increase my brush size, and just paint it like that. Or if you use Alt to rotate round, but if you use Shift, hold Shift as well, you can snap to different views, different angles. It might also help if you're in orthographic view, but I'm just going to keep it in perspective for now. So, and then you just paint with the brush here, and it just prints in that information into the mask. Uh, to adjust the stencil, just hold down S. Left click will rotate, and if you hold shift, it will snap in increments like this. And then if you hold S again, right click and move the mouse will scale it. And holding S, middle mouse button will move it. So now, just as an example, I'm just going to paint this on the top. You can rotate your camera or you can rotate the stencil. We can add another splash in. So we've got this splash as part of the stencil kit. Put that in. And now we've got some splashes on our model. So let's say if we want some oil leaks, I'll just create a new material. Uh, black mask again. But for this, I'm going to make the colour black, and I'm going to make it a bit more shinier, with a little bit of metallicness in it. And then just same again, projection, and we have stuff like streaks, dirt splashes, whichever you want. So for this, I'm just going to choose this drips texture. And again, hold S, right click to scale, middle mouse to adjust. And we just paint that information in there. And you can use levels. So if I right click on the mask and go to levels, we can make it more prominent or less prominent. So as you can see, it's coming in a bit more there. That might be a bit too much, so we can just dial it back a bit. And then just just it that way. Now we have more stencils, we just try this one. Start that at the top. And there we go, 
but with the levels that's a bit too much so I'm just going to create a new layer levels and then we can paint it there and we can dial back the levels a bit so we can get our dirt and with my stencils pack uh, link in the description we've got all sorts we've got wood grain so it uses this to differentiate between different coloured woods for example so if I just get a wood material and the cool thing about this is we can just add one of them uh, so we hide this so th this is our wood for example and then you can either duplicate or just create a colour fill layer I'm just going to duplicate it and just change the base wood colour let's just say it was painted I don't know blue that's a bit too much but it'll do for this purpose I'm just going to add a black mask to that and now if we go into our stencils again we can choose our wood grain so you can select which one you want I'll just choose this one scale it up and you can transition between your wood grain choose some different ones now if you paint over black it will erase whatever you've already done on that layer and I'll show you how to fix that in a minute so if we just adjust the levels we just increase the contrast a bit more and if we add just fill layer in here turn everything off other than the height we can bring the height down and it's as if the wood is chipped through and you can just do that with the whole mesh okay so how do we fix the problem of the black erasing part of our material so I'll just set up some basic colours, just make this I know, red so we can see it easier. Right, so we use one of our stencils, let's just say this one, and let's just say we, we paint it at the top, because we want some damage at the top. So if we paint this in for example, and let's just say we want to add some streaks, and these streaks overlap it, so I'm putting these streaks at the bottom, as you see part of the texture is black at the top so if I paint these streaks in yes it'll come in but the black part will start overriding part of what we've already done so there's no direct fix as far as I'm aware like changing the the brush settings themselves unfortunately however if we go on the mask we can add a paint layer and if we add the paint layer to screen Screen means that it'll only add white to the image and it'll discard the black. So I can add the white and it'll no longer affect our other area. Obviously if we do this because it's on the same layer, the black will overwrite because we'd, we'd want to adjust that on the layer. But to fix that, you just simply add another paint layer, set it to screen, and now you can overlay it even more. So that's just a little tip. and. Uh, say if you've got a layer like this and you want height using this mask instead of copying that mask you can use anchor points uh, I will be doing a tutorial for that so if that's finished that'll be linked at the end of this video uh, but yeah just have a mess around uh, you can either purchase my pack full of different alphas as you can see here we've got PNGs and we have TIFFs so yeah there's a collection of 35 so far so if you want to purchase that that's a link in the description if you want to get notified on future products on Gumroad or just to see if I produce any free content or just subscribe to my mailing list just type in your name on my Gumroad account and you'll get updated through that uh, but if not you can just use the preset grunges that come with Substance Designer, uh, Substance Painter rather you can create your own in Substance Designer or create your own with photographs like I did. So yeah, the options are quite limitless here. And uh, with my stencils pack, for example, these you can use them as decals as well. So we've got some multifunctional use. Uh, but yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like. Please consider subscribing. It's free. Ring that notification bell to get notified on my next video. And I'll see you in the next one.